The earthquake also affected nuclear power facilities. The Fukushima Daiichi and Daini plants were shaken and then hit by waves one meter high. NHK World's Takafumi Terui reports. Naohiro Masuda is an executive at the plant's operator, Tepco. He spoke at a hastily arranged news conference on Tuesday morning. A one-meter high wave was observed at Fukushima Daiichi at 6.38 a.m. and at Fukushima Daini at 6.31 a.m. Fukushima Daiichi suffered a triple meltdown five years ago. The Daini plant is just 10 kilometers to the south. Both plants were hit by tsunami about 40 minutes after the quake. There have been no reports of anything wrong with the workers at either plant. They have been confirmed to be safe. The work they had already started at Fukushima Daiichi. Workers had to stop their decommissioning work and evacuate to higher ground. Masuda said all the emergency steps had gone smoothly at Daiichi. But that wasn't the case at Fukushima Daini. A cooling system for spent nuclear fuel shut down for over 90 minutes. More than 2,500 rods of spent nuclear fuel are stored in a pool in one of the reactor buildings. They must be constantly cooled by water or they will heat up again. If the temperature of the spent fuel rises unchecked, there could be a meltdown. Water is kept circulating throughout the cooling system. A pump moves it into the pool and the overflow goes into the skimmer surge tank. But when a sensor in the tank detects a drop in the water level, the flow is automatically shut off to prevent possible leaks. Tetko said this time there was a false reading. The water inside the tank was sloshing around, but the sensor read it as a drop in the level. The pump shut off 10 minutes after the jolt. The building where the pool is shook, and so the water inside the pool was disturbed. The detector sensed a drop in the water level, which actually was the water sloshing around, and this caused the cooling system to stop. Tepco said it has confirmed there were no leaks anywhere. It said the temperature of the spent fuel rose by 0.2 degree while the cooling system was off. It added that it's now falling back to normal. A power failure temporarily knocked out a monitor that measures the level of radioactive materials around the plant. Many of Japan's nuclear plants remain offline. But they all have massive amounts of spent nuclear fuel to keep safe. This case is showing us once again how difficult this important task can be. Takahumi Terui, NHK World, Tokyo. We can't trust what TEPCO says.
Japan's nuclear regulator has taken steps to get a plant in southwestern Japan back online. Kyushu Electric Power is seeking to restart two of its reactors at the Genkai plant in Saga Prefecture. The Japanese government and local authorities have drawn up an evacuation plan for residents around the plant. Under the plan, approximately 8,100 people living within five kilometers of the plant will be evacuated beyond a 30 kilometer radius in case of an accident. Residents living on 16 remote islands within the 30 kilometer radius will be evacuated by boat. The Nuclear Regulation Authority effectively approved Kyushu Electric's safety measures for the plant's number three and number four reactors earlier this month. The NRA is scheduled to finalize its decision after hearing public opinion. Genkai is the fifth commercial nuclear plant in Japan to reach this stage since new government requirements were introduced after the Fukushima Daiichi accident in 2011. NRA officials have also approved assessments by Japanese power companies checking the durability of steel components for their nuclear plants. The officials asked 11 utilities across Japan to check components made with forged steel. Forged steel with a high carbon content is relatively fragile. After reviewing their records, all firms reported back last month that the steel components contained the correct proportion of carbon. The move came after safety concerns grew in France, where steel used in reactor walls was found to be weaker than expected. The Japanese reactors used parts made with the same steel. The authority also plans to review the inspection method so the amount of carbon in steel for nuclear plant components can be more accurately measured. The cost of hosting the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics in Tokyo could mount to two and a half times the estimate that was originally proposed. Sources told NHK that the latest estimate, compiled by the Tokyo Organizing Committee earlier this month, stands at around $18 billion. Major items such as the construction of venues and security expenses are projected to cost about $11 billion. That figure doesn't include operational costs for the athletes' villages and other expenditures. The cost of hosting the Games was initially assessed at around $7.2 billion when Tokyo was in competition to be the host city. The Tokyo Organizing Committee said comparing the two estimates is not appropriate since the initial figure didn't include outlays for security, transportation and other items that Tokyo and the central government are responsible for. The committee plans to discuss ways to cut costs in meetings with the Tokyo and central governments as well as the International Olympic Committee later this month.